Hi, I'm Carmen. I'm a teacher, a fellow ADHDer, and a certified life coach. And I started this podcast with the intention of giving ADHDers everywhere a sense of understanding of this super complex neurodevelopmental disorder and to create a fabulous and safe place to share the struggles, the wins, and the newest researched strategies to help you be the you that you've always dreamed to be. Are you ready? Let's get started. If you would like some help with your planning day to day using journaling and um, little prompts to help you throughout the day, there is a freebie in the show notes. Go grab it now and you can use it and print it out for as many days as you'd like or need. Do you ever find yourself getting nothing that you wanted to get done after a day of indecision and spinning in your head? How about shame after writing a plan and then not following it? How about waiting until the last possible minute to get a big project done? Oh, the anxiety. How about tips from others that sound like, oh, just use this app. Don't you just use like a calendar? You should try time blocking. I write these as I roll my eyes, and I'm sure you are too. As you and I both know, these strategies are not ADHD friendly because we can't keep them consistently. They are sometimes filled with shame because we are unable to meet with the expectations of our neurodevelopmentally typical peers. With the ableist culture nowadays and the way that we are viewed as women specifically, we can't meet all of those executive functioning tasks as well as our peers. Okay, I want you to take a deep breath with me here. (sighs) Like, I know. There's feelings that are coming up for you. They're super uncomfortable. I invite you to write about them. Please don't just dismiss them because these feelings are trying to communicate with you. They're trying to tell you something. You need to allow it in order to accept yourself with ADHD and in order to put these ADHD friendly strategies in place You need to do that to get rid of the shame and start living your life. Of course, shame won't leave forever, but we can move forward with more skills around regulating the feelings as we use these strategies. So, when I say the words, wasting time, what comes up for you? What is your mind responding with? Have you ever felt like this at the end of the day? I am right there with you, listener. So let me offer you this thought. There is no such thing as wasted time. I know, it takes a while to wrap your mind around it. But it's true. No time that you have spent on this earth, no matter what you did or didn't do, is never time wasted. Because you, just being here, you, you're a valuable human being and the world is better with you. So whether you did or didn't do whatever it was during the day, it does not impact your value as a person. You, as a valuable human being, are not wasted time. Hey listener. Have you subscribed to this show yet? If you're enjoying it, I suggest hitting the little subscribe button under the podcast main page so that when new episodes come out, they just pop up in your feed 
just like the algorithms of Instagram and Facebook when you follow things. So if you like this podcast, go click that follow button. So because of our interest-based nervous systems and unique brain structures, planning and goal setting is difficult because of our inability to visualize the future and the big picture like that big five-year plan. Our time blindness basically blocks our ability to accurately plan that far ahead. Our brains don't work like that. Hear me. I am not saying it can't get done. I'm saying it takes specific strategies specific to your personal needs to reach those types of goals. There is hope. It just takes a little time and a little more work on our end. So, are you ready for some ADHD-friendly time management and planning strategies? Me too. Let's get started. The first tip that I want to give is plan your mornings as lightly as you can. Usually, humans with ADHD struggle in the a.m. hours. It takes our brains just a little longer to wake up. I'm going to go into this in a different episode, but it has to do with our sleep and wake systems. Do activities that you enjoy to start your day. Personally, I like to be outdoors, drink my superfood shake, read and listen to a podcast or upbeat music. I like to take a walk and do anything that helps me feel rejuvenated and ready for the day. You find that thing for you. Anything that will get you up and moving and in a good mood. The next thing I want to talk about is using your strengths. If you're new to thought work and you are just listening to this episode for the first time, you may have to explore them and see where your true strengths are. For a lot of ADHDers, their creativities is in one or more of the following categories. So there's like a bunch of different types of creativity and we have strengths in a lot of different areas. Now we all have these skills, but some of us are better at them, like certain ones, than other ones. For example, you might be super good at problem solving or you're really good at creating art with your hands, like painting or creating sculptures or building things. You may be an awesome writer or you could be really great at picking out things that go well together like outfits and interior design. You could be really creative with other things like um, being able to think outside the box and solve a problem in a way that no one else would have ever thought of. These are the types of things that are strengths for ADHD. You just have to explore them, and there are more. Um, Explore them. I invite you to explore them, journal about them, and figure out which ones are yours and use them to your advantage. Like I always say, use it to work for you, not to create more work for you. Some other strengths we have have to do with being in nature and being nature smart. So just knowing things like about nature and thinking outside the box. A lot of people with ADHD are entrepreneurs or if you just literally Google famous people with ADHD, I'm sure the list will surprise you. We also encompass the term called exuberance. It's uh, energy, basically. It's our hyperactivity, but it's also energy that can be channeled if you work on it. Managing time is a concept. I'm going to say that again. Managing time is a concept because time is a concept. When you think about time, can you touch it? I mean, like, not a clock, like no clocks around. Can you really see it unless you make a sundial? Can you feel it? I mean, I know I can feel it because of the, where the sun is, but say you're in a dark room all day. 
Can you see time? Can you touch it? Is it something that is tangible? The answer is no. Time is a concept. Managing time for ADHDers is managing your mind in the construct of the time of the day because of, yep, you guessed it, our time blindness. So this looks like being honest with yourself about how long it really takes to do something, like timing yourself and writing it down and then adding five minutes and then planning accordingly. Give yourself that extra time. We tend to underestimate the amount of times things take. We'll time ourselves doing something and say, well, I got distracted 5,000 times, so I'm going to take a few minutes off that. No, that means you should add a few minutes on because there's more of a chance that you're probably going to get distracted in the future. Another strength has to do with our empathy and our feeling feeling so strongly. So we also tend to be people pleasers. So this is a strength and a weakness. So we're people pleasers in order to avoid that rejection. We become the yes men. So be clear. Set boundaries with your time and your people in your time. You don't always have to say yes. Next, when you make a plan or to-do list, take it and chunk it. And then chunk each part of it. For example, get ready for bed. You can chunk that down into take a shower, brush my teeth, put pajamas on, tidy up my room, get ready for bed, stretch, other things, details. I'm talking details. We are not detail oriented. So use those details. The last strength I want to talk about is you, my friend. You are the biggest strength you have. You are your biggest advocate and you are your biggest truth. So be honest with yourself right now. Tell yourself what you're going to do and then honor that. Because I'm telling you, living life with these strategies is a lot easier and it makes life a lot more enjoyable with this misunderstood very under-researched disorder and I just want to say that you are special whoever you are wherever you are you belong here and you're in the right place you're doing the right thing you're not behind and you can do this until next time Stay authentic, friends. Hey, listener. If you're enjoying this show, you should totally subscribe to it so that you can see when new episodes pop right up into your feed. In Spotify, if you go up at the top and hit click follow, it'll notify you every time there's a new episode. Then really quick as you're listening to this right under the follow little um, bubble there's a rating bubble if you could just rate this podcast and give some feedback possibly maybe answer the poll question that's underneath the podcast I would really really appreciate it I hope that you're enjoying whatever you're doing today or tonight have a great one If you would like some help with your planning day to day using journaling and um, little prompts to help you throughout the day, there is a freebie in the show notes. Go grab it now and you can use it and print it out for as many days as you'd like or need.